Joining me right now is the president of the American Academy of Pediatrics, Dr. Goza. It's good to see you again, doctor. This plea coming from such a large group of well-known and well-respected medical associations like yours, why did you feel the need to speak out about it? So we know if we're going to have a national strategy to stop the spread of this virus, we have to have children vaccinated. And children have to be tested um, in this vaccine trials. And once we know it's safe and effective for adults, it's the time to start adding children into these trials. Because the longer we delay, the longer it's going to take for us to get a vaccine that we know is safe and effective for children. Children aren't little adults, and so we can't assume that they will react the same way to a vaccine as adults do. That's so true. And, and doctor, as you well know, there's already a certain level of hesitation among some parents about vaccinating their kids for with any vaccine, let alone a, a new vaccine like this. Are you saying that trials involving kids need to happen sooner, faster than they would with another vaccine candidate? We need the children enrolled in these su studies as soon as it is safe and, and as soon as possible. If we delay much longer, we may not have a vaccine ready for children before school starts again next year. And children are suffering from this virus. Over a million children have been infected with it, but they're also suffering in other ways. They're missing out on school and education. They're missing out on other activities. Their emotional and mental health is being suffering from this. And it's just wrong to not have children benefit from the vaccine when they're, when they're so affected by, it, by this virus. Dr. Goza, do you, do you when is too late to get this vaccine trial started? Are you seeing, does it feel like that folks are slow walking this? We feel like now that they're saying that they're seeing safety and efficacy with adults, that we need them to get these children enrolled in trials as quickly as they can. What is your sense, let's say, you know, what we know is your best sense of a vaccine for kids would be available. If first doses are available for the most at risk by the end of the year, how long after do you think shots could be ready for kids? That's all going to depend on what the data shows for safety and efficacy, because we know if we're going to get parents to take, get, have their children take this vaccine, we be, have to be able to show them safety and efficacy studies done by the research. Yeah. You've also, you, you mentioned um, the one, more than one million children in the United, United States have been diagnosed with COVID. Can you put that in for perspective for folks? Because as we have seen, children appear to handle the virus better than the more at-risk populations. But what does this number mean? Well, it means that children can get COVID-19. They can spread it. And some children get very sick with this disease. And we also do not know the long-term consequences of this disease. We've only known about it now for nine months. And so we do not know the long-term health consequences. We do realize that there are gonna be long-term mental health issues from this virus and the fact that it's affecting children in many ways. And so it's really necessary to get, stop the spread of this virus. And that's one thing not to, to, to keep remembering is we do not know the long-term consequences of this virus on, on any human, a little human or an older human. It's great to see you, Dr. Goza. Thank you so much. Great.